yeah. as a planet. That's arguable to some people. Yeah. But that's maybe because their ears are aged out. Yeah. The access to creating music is way easier these days. Back in the days, it would be even special if you could ever enter a studio. Now you can mm. create a studio. And that's going to create its own set of problems. You know, we're going to see massive dilution. Yep. Um, combine, couple that with artificial intelligence and you're going to see a lot of dilution. But that just means uh, companies like Empire will be more important, right? Because how do you separate yourself? How do you rise out of that level of dilution? How do you poke out? It's going to require distinct marketing and intelligent, creative, in, you know, ingenious marketing really honestly to stand out from the pack so as the diy market continues to grow i think the need for labels that truly understand how to market records are going to increase as well um and with the majors kind of moving in different directions now yep. um you know we're in acquisitions and mergers uh recently a big, of the a big major business. cloud nine got bought by oh, yeah. warner music so yeah. this it's an international like over the whole planet you can see that 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 is happening yeah mergers and acquisitions are the music business goes through periods of um consolidation and periods of fragmentation and we're in a hyper um consolidation period um fortunately i have no desire to be consolidated mm -hmm. so uh But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, technology is is the, the X factor and like the the super multiplier that can cause anything to happen at any time. How do you see that relationship between technology and music develop in in the in the near future? Everybody was shocked hearing those AI genera generated songs. Um, but let's talk from a creator point of view. It's uh. It's going to be exhilarating. And I use the word exhilarating because it's like a roller coaster. It's, it can make you really happy and scare the shit out of you mm -hmm. at the same time, right? Yeah. So it's um, it's going to be definitely, the, it's a wild card that like we've never seen before. It'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. We'll be on the front end of it. I always prefer to be on the front end of change. In what way? The, the technology, uh, figuring out royalty attribution models for all the large language models, how that's mm -hmm. going to look. Is there going to be content ID systems? How are you going to claim it? What does that look like for intellectual property rights, trademark, derivative works? You know, what's law going to look like in the U.S. versus China versus developing markets like Vietnam or Nigeria or other well-developed markets like the U.K. and the Netherlands? Um, most of the construct of music law has primarily been a Western construct for the last hundred years. This is a new frontier. No one needs to necessarily adapt to any construct. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. I just hope um, the West tends to have a very arrogant lens of how things should be done. And I hope that doesn't preclude us from doing whatever is necessary to make sure that, um, we continue to promote creatives. How right do you way. think you can stay ahead of that? There's going to be some legislation that passes at some point, and you have to be able to figure out how to navigate that legislation quickly. And again, it's not necessarily going to be on a domestic level. The international is not going to adopt what's happening domestically. Yeah. As, as has been the case for a hundred years, right? This is what a record deal looks like. This is what a publishing deal looks like. For the rest of the world, most everybody does it the same way. This is like, this is the gold rush. This is the wild, wild west. This is, this is a whole, it could become something incredibly great or it could become incredibly dystopian. Depends People, on who got their hands on yeah. first and what responsibility they carry at the end of the day. Sure, but I think that us as a creative community, we need to hold our ground and make sure that whatever is done is done in a fashion that respects the arts, yep. you know, to the best of our ability. Yep. Um, so you would have, you would hope that the powers that be that are in similar positions to mine and maybe in greater positions than me would have that same integrity. Yep. That remains to be seen. Would you think it will be that big? Because I, 
also have a feeling that with everything getting into this AI direction and, and everything automatic, I think the more robot-ish things we see around us and AI-ish we see around us, we seek more human, <laughs> the human touch. That's Or is that me? Is that me that's being? A, that's uh, a subjective perspective. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think so? I don't know how my seven-year-old is going to feel by the time she's 15. I know how we feel because we've in, been ingrained in a in a way of life. That's our that's our social construct. Who's to say what the next generation's social construct is going to be? Yeah, remains to me seen if Homo sapien will even be around in 30 years, yeah. at least in its current, not in its current form. Mm -hmm. You know, we're headed into bionics, robotics, AI, Neuralink, CRISPR. There's a lot of things coming along that are going to completely <clears throat> change the way we function as humans in an organic nature. We're headed into a very inorganic society. And I don't, remains to be seen on you how could, fast that'll happen. You can say they're having a chip entering your body, making you more efficient or smarter. It's a weird question to ask, but I think... What if that a, chip was just there to save your life? Right? Yeah. We, put, we put pacemakers in our heart to regulate our heart. Sure. But what if it was a chip that you could regulate with your phone? Would you do that? If it saved your life and you could spend more time with your children? Of course. Mm. Again, it's, it's all subjective, right? And then at, at, at what point is too much, too much? And then why, why it be too much to this generation might be not too much to the next generation and so on and so forth. But that's all part of evolution and progression. You know, I, I remember uh, my uncle in the 90s saying, checks, that's not money. You have to have cash. And then I saw him adapt to checks. And then credit cards, that's not money. That's plastic. Yeah. It has to be paper. At least check is still paper. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Unc, you're tripping. This you sound old. Mm -hmm. And then. Like a week ago. Yeah, I, he started using credit cards. Yeah. yeah. Like a week ago, I saw a clip of the 90s and then they asked somebody, do you need a cell phone? And he was like, no, nobody has to call me all day long. Correct. And now you can't even live without a cell phone. So yeah. the evolution is coming and you have to ride the wave or, yeah, and, or else, and yeah. Credit cards is 20 years ago now, right? Like, so mm -hmm. we pay. went to, but even before Apple that, pay. you have to go through the evolution of it. We went yeah. to PayPal was the first yeah. to really break ground like that. And then from PayPal, we went to Venmo, Cash App, um, you know, peer to peer payments. Yeah. And then now it's Apple Pay, Google Pay, but really it's DeFi and crypto. And so everything is an evolutionary process. But if you would have told somebody in 95 about crypto, it would sound completely absurd. You had to go through the evolutionary process where the social construct of DeFi, crypto, things like Coinbase, Trust Wallet, MetaMask become more palatable. Yeah. Right. So it's the same thing with what you're saying. Um, you know, how are people going to feel about certain things? And that's why I said our perspective as people that have been ingrained in a certain way of living is going to be very different than my daughter. Yeah. Who's already seen driverless cars. Yeah. She spent more of her life seeing driverless cars than cars that are driven by humans because we live in San Francisco. It's very now, common. Yeah, I was about to say, I realized that you're based in San Francisco. You're seeing more crazy shit than we do. Yeah. If she sees a car drive by with nobody sitting in it, she doesn't even blink at it. It's completely normal to her. I've never seen that in my life. San Francisco, you <laughs> yeah. see it all day, yeah. bro. It's, it's, yeah, man. It's like- I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, I don't have to deal with the driver. Um, I feel more secure because yeah. I could just hit the stop button, jump out whenever I want. I don't have to worry about somebody recognizing where they drop me off yeah. or something. Like, it just feels more secure. We're going to have that conversation with our grandchildren. The car you already clean. drove a car all the time. You're like all the time. Yeah. You're going to have those yeah. jokes. And like, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in the day, we used to drive cars. We used to control that thing. Yeah, of course. Crazy. It's, it's uh, a lot closer than we think it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that multiplier. Like the rate of acceleration has a multiplier that's, it's accelerating at a speed we can't control anymore. And so, yeah, again, it's, it's going to be exhilarating. As a San Francisco native, what is, name us something exciting before, you know, it's going to get a very depressive conversation. What is something exciting you saw around you? You were like, oh, damn, this is going to help make the world a better place or a more fun place. 